Hey there, SolidWorks community. We're excited to bring you this three-part series where we're honoring one of the founding members of the Justice League of America, The Flash, by modeling his iconic mask in SolidWorks. A little known fact about The Flash, while he may be the fastest man alive, he's actually a notoriously slow eater. It drives the other members of the Justice League crazy. So do what you wish with that useless piece of trivia. So the flash mask has a unique organic form, so we're going to model it around some reference images using mostly surface features. Let's start running through this series in a new part file with a sketch on the right plane. Here I'm going to navigate to Tools, Sketch Tools, Sketch Picture, and drop in a side view reference image of the flash mask. And here you can either size and position the image manually, or use the Sketch Picture property manager to fine tune its position. And I'll repeat that with a front view reference image. Now I found the best way to control the shape of the mask is to bite off modeling it in chunks using the boundary surface tool. We are also just going to model half of the mask and mirror it at the very end of the series. So let's start by building the surface for the top rear portion of the mask. Sketching on the right plane, I'm just going to use the spline tool to draw an outline of this upper quadrant of the mask. Since we're working with surfaces, this can remain an open contour. I'm also going to constrain the top spline handle to be horizontal and the bottom spline handle to be vertical. This helps control how this first surface will interact with the other surfaces creating a nice smooth transition between all of the surfaces. Now sketching on the front plane, I'll create another open spline outlining the mask from the front view. Here I'm just ensuring the top end point is coincident with our first sketch and the bottom end point is horizontal to the bottom end point of the first sketch. Once you're happy with the shape of the outline, exit the sketch, and I'm going to hide our reference images to make our sketches easier to see. Now navigate to Boundary Surface, found in the Surfaces tab in the Command Manager, and select the two spline sketches to create the surface. So this initially creates a simple angular surface. We can then control the curvature of this surface using this dropdown under Direction 1. For each sketch, let's select Normal to Profile, which, as the name suggests, will start and terminate the surface normal to each sketch, helping to round out this surface and make the transition between the interacting surfaces nice and smooth. You can also control the direction and intensity of this relationship to fine-tune the shape. So there we have our initial quadrant. I'm going to follow these same steps, just with different spline profiles, to wrap up the initial outer surface of half of the mask. So here we have the initial layout of the surfaces. As you can see, I ended up splitting this into five separate surfaces because I needed a little more control over the shape of the lower front quadrant, so I broke it into two surfaces. Just keep in mind, the more control you want over a specific area, you may need to break it into multiple surfaces to achieve the result you're after. Now let's navigate to Knit Surface in the Surfaces tab to knit these individual surfaces together, and ensuring the Merge Entities option is selected, then click OK. Now let's create the cutouts for the mouth. Sketching on the right plane, I'm simply using the spline tool to match the outline of the reference image. Again, this can be an open contour. Now exit the sketch and with the sketch highlighted, navigate to Insert, Features, Split. In the Split Properties Manager, ensure your sketch is selected under Trim Tools and click the Cut Part button. Then simply click on the area you'd like to split. And in this case, we want to discard this portion, so I'll make sure the Consume Cut Bodies option is selected. Let's wrap up Part 1 of this series by adding the nose contour surface. I'll first draw an open spline on the right plane to match the outline of the nose piece. Just make sure the line is tangent to the existing surface. I'll use this spline for another boundary surface in a minute. Then sketch on the front plane in preparation for another split. 
I'm drawing an arced portion to cut away from the front of the mask that I'll replace with the nose piece. With this sketch, I just want to make sure the top end point is coincident with the top end point of the previous sketch I created. Again, use the split tool to discard this front portion of the mask. Now using the boundary surface tool again, first select the nose contour spline, then right click in the box labeled direction one and click on selection manager. This selection manager will allow us to select these newly created edges on the existing surface to boundary to. For this open group of edges, let's select the tangency to face option in the drop down under direction one to blend the surfaces together nicely. And for the nose contour sketch, select normal to profile. Again, this will ensure the two halves of the mask blend perfectly when mirrored later on. So we're well underway to modeling the Flash's iconic mask. In part two of the series, we'll run through adding the cutouts for the eyes, and we'll use some additional surfacing tools to add the eyebrow detail. Stay tuned.